Hello everyone and welcome back to the 2019 FIDE World Cup. Uh, it's Jeffrey Xiong versus Yang Shishtov Duda. Uh, in the previous game we've shown Duda won a very nice game with the white pieces and uh, well now Jeffrey has to win on demand if he doesn't want to be eliminated from the FIDE World Cup. Uh, a lot of you have already suggested this game and for a very good reason so let's uh, just enjoy it. Uh, with the white pieces uh, Xiong opens with e4. Uh, with e5 and now bishop to c4 he goes for the bishop's opening uh, trying to mix it up as he has to win this game uh, with knight to f6 and now d3 uh, with c6 preparing d5 uh, knight to f3 and now of course d5 bishop back to b3 uh, and bishop to b4 check duda is now following a game he already played uh, against peter swidler in the uh, fide grand prix in riga in july uh, the, that ended in a draw, uh, bishop to d2, bishop captures, queen captures, and now queen to d6. Uh, developing the queen here, defending d5 pawn, and queen to g5, attacking the g7 pawn. Uh, with knight b to d7, offering the g7 pawn for a lot of activity, of course, uh, after uh, rook to h8. Uh, but, uh, of course, the pawn is not to be captured. e captures on d5, c captures, and now comes d4. With e4, everything the same as uh, in the uh, FIDE Grand Prix game against Peter Swidler, uh, uh, but the difference is Swidler played knight to h4 here, uh, whereas uh, knight to e5 here by Xiong. It's not a new move, it has been played before in one game, uh, Vitugov versus Zubov uh, in 2016, but uh, again, uh, it, it will take a different turn, of course. Uh, with castles, finally by Duda, and now knight to c3. Uh, now, uh, with um, uh, well, with more pressure on the d5 pawn, knight to b6, uh, and here f3, hoping to get uh, the g-file open. For example, if captures, captures, uh, then you will get a lot of pressure along the g-file. So after f3, just bishop to e6 by Duda. Uh, we have uh, castles here, queenside, uh, which is a new move. Uh, in the game, uh, we already mentioned Vituba versus Zuba, queen to e3 was played. But okay, here we have castles. And immediately rook a to c8 by Duda. Uh, here Duda is hoping to grab the knight with rook captures on c3. For example, if white starts something like h4, he wants to push on the uh, king side, uh, uh, we would mo most likely see rook captures on c3. And after b captures, now knight to c4, sorry, not <laughs> that knight, knight to c4. Uh, just a very nice knight, of course, threatening queen to a3 check, followed by queen to b2 mate. Uh, so you would have to capture it, and after d captures, uh, it would just be a very nice position for black. Uh, queen a3 is an idea, you're also preparing to push uh, the e3 pawn, this knight is coming to d5, it's going to be very uh, very hard for white to play this, especially if you have to win this. If you try to hide your king somewhere on the king side, still just e3 check, even you give up a pawn, knight is coming to d5. Uh, and it, it's going to be very hard. Queen e2, b5, defending the c4 pawn. And now, even though you have the two rooks, you're not really going to have uh, anywhere to use them. So, after rook a to c8, uh, Xion goes back. Queen to d2, not allowing uh, this uh, uh, rook uh, uh, p uh, sacrifice. Uh, with a6 by black, and now rook h to e1. Uh, we have finally e captures on f3, g captures on f3, and now knight uh, f to d7. Going for a knight trade here, and now Xiong just, just starts pushing on the king side, h4. Uh, with f6 here, uh, trying to get rid of the knight, hopefully trade here, but of course uh, Xiong is not interested in that. He just brings the knight back, and now uh, it's very hard for black. This knight really doesn't have all that many squares, this knight is in the way, the pawn is covering these squares, f6 now prevents the knight from joining the game. So you will have to decide how to deal with uh, the knight here on d7. Uh, we have bishop to f7 by Duda, and now queen to f4, offering a queen trade. Uh, we have rook to c6, defending the queen, and here uh, Xiong trades. We have queen captures, rook captures, and now knight to c5, grabbing even more space, attacking the b7 pawn. Uh, of course, you cannot trade, otherwise you lose material here, both your uh, rook and the knight will be under attack. So, rook to b8, defending the pawn here, and now rook to e7. Again, a nice free rook lift. Uh, King to f8, attacking the rook, and now rook d to e1, nicely doubling up on the e file. And here, if you look at this position, it's uh, it's extremely hard for black to make a move. What do you what do, what do you play here? It's like it's sort of a tsukswang, and th there are no good moves for black here. For example, uh, what can you play? If, uh, if you try something like bishop to g6, 
uh, which seems like uh, well, a move you transfer the bishop to, to a better diagonal. Then uh, white has this trick of playing h5. Uh, and now after bishop captures uh, this pawn, I don't know if uh, Xiong had all of this planned out at the moment that he played h4, but uh, you know maybe maybe even he did would be would be very impressive. Uh, but the point is that you have to give up this pawn, so the bishop cannot use uh, f5 to defend the knight on d7 because now when the bishop is here, you cannot defend the knight with, from g4 due to the pawn here, uh, and now you play bishop to a4. And now the bishop cannot be captured because uh, knight captures here with check will pick up the rook here. Uh, and uh, what what else way is there to defend the knight? You cannot capture on c5 because again pawn comes with a double attack. Uh, so your only option is to bring the bishop back to e8. But this doesn't work because now <laughs> knight knight captures on b7. Uh, so what else uh, can you play? The rook is under attack. <clears throat> you have to capture it, and then you get rook captures with check. King f7. Rook checks. King g6. Rook goes here. You're gonna grab this pawn, and slowly but surely you will win this game. And if you don't play something like bishop to g6, uh, you, you could try something like h6, just to wait and see what happens. Then bishop to a4 is strong uh, right away. Uh, just uh, as if the bishop is not on g6, to be able to defend the knight from f5, you cannot defend it from here. That's covered twice. Bishop e8 uh, runs into the same idea. So here, Duda tried the only thing he had left. He played knight captures on c5. Uh, with pawn captures, and now, of course, his two pieces are under attack. Well, the knight and the rook, and he played rook to d7. Now hoping for rook captures, knight captures. Uh, but uh, without even pausing the video, of course, you know what Xiong played here. Uh, without even giving you a couple of seconds, of course, you all see uh, rook captures on f7. Uh, just grabbing two pieces for the rook, which is uh, much better. Uh, with king captures on f7 as the king is in check, and now c captures on b6. So now it's uh, a bishop, knight, and the rook against two rooks. Uh, with rook b to d8 by Duda, and now knight captures on d5. And here, uh, knight captures on d5, uh, well, usually you wouldn't really give up uh, two pieces uh, for a rook, but here it, it's a very... Uh, special occasion because here if rook captures you're gonna go uh, a4 uh, the rook is still pinned you cannot move it uh, for example king to f8 unpinning now you will capture it and after rook captures you're gonna go rook to d1 as the pawn end game is winning for white it's six against five and uh, you're just gonna start pushing here the, the king is gonna help out uh, on the king side if needed and the king and pawn end game is winning and if you decline then rook d7 you go after this pawn here rook e7 rook back to d5 and this is just a, a, a much better position uh, for white most likely white will win this so duda uh, doesn't uh, like the idea of uh, grabbing the two pieces for a rook in this position he plays king to g6 uh, and okay c4 consolidating that uh, d5 square for the knight uh, with king to h5 going for the pawn but now rook to e4 just defending it uh, and unless you can uh, get some activity for these two rooks, they're just they're just useless. Uh, we have rook to c8, now threatening rook captures here, as the c pawn will be pinned, king to d2, and now g5. We have king to e3, unpinning, now knight captures on f6 is a threat, uh, which would win the rook. Rook to f7, defending the pawn, and now uh, h captures on g5. We have f captures on g5, and now bishop to a4. Uh, king goes to h6, and now bishop to e8, uh, pushing the rook back, rook to f8, and now bishop to d7, attacking the c8 rook. Uh, rook back to b8, and now we have b4. Uh, black has no active moves, so white will just keep on improving the position. King g6, and now comes knight to c7. Uh, we have uh, rook f to d8, uh, attacking the bishop, and now rook to e7. Uh, just uh, the defending, and if the king moves, you're just gonna start gobbling up pawns. Uh, we have rook to h8, defending the h7 pawn, now bishop to e8, check. Here, king to f6, attacking the rook, and here, uh, knight to d5, check. This is move 41, uh, and it was in this position that young Shishtov Duda resigned the game, and uh, amazingly, Jeffrey Xiong was able to win on demand, equalizing the score, and now, tomorrow, they are going into the rapid section. Uh, he resigns as there is not much to do here, your only option is king f5 and then you get bishop to h5, which is not pleasant, uh, the bishop covers d squares, the knight covers d squares, and well, king d4 followed by rook e5 is checkmate, there's not much you can do about it, uh, you can go something like rook hd8, king d4, now there's the threat of mate, 
it's not uh, not easily prevented g4 doesn't do anything we're just gonna play f4 keep it keep the uh, the g5 square uh closed and well th there's nothing to do you can try rook captures this uh but now you're just down a whole piece and well it's a, a completely winning position for white so of course duda knows this after knight to d5 he resigns and tomorrow we're gonna see uh, a lot more action between the two of them uh, in the rapid section as bo both of the games were were pretty insane uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Ravin, Ravindra Yoglakar, uh, Kamal Zabkowski, Matthias Kraft, uh, Ferdinand Suter, and Alan Brun for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continuing the coverage of the FIDE World Cup, we're going to check at least one more game from this round, as we do have to check out the standings also, uh, you know, checking up on your suggestions and uh, following up on anything else that ha that's happening in the chess world. So thank you all, I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.